Hi, my name is John Gorby. I'm a professional guitarist, educator, performer, and for the past seven years I've been an endorsed musician. And I want to first start off with talking about the parts of the guitar, okay? Real important to know if you're going to start to play this thing. So, um, I think the easiest parts to start with are the body, the neck, and the head, okay? Um, just think of a person. You have the body, the neck, and the head. Very simple. And on the body, on the acoustic guitar, we have here a saddle, uh, which is inside of a bridge here. Uh, the saddle is, of course, where the uh, strings meet. And you have the uh, bridge pins uh, that hold the strings down. Uh, moving this way, we have a sound hole. Now, the sound hole on the acoustic guitar acts as an amplifier. Okay, so um, this body will uh, will resonate, vibrate, and push the air out and uh, enable you to hear the guitar. Uh, mounted onto the neck, we have a fingerboard or a fretboard, and uh, this, of course, is where you play. And we have these metal bars here called frets. All right, that's what changes the pitches. Um, and then at the end of the neck, you have the nut. Okay, it's the other point where the strings meet between the saddle and the nut. And then we have the tuning machines uh, mounted on the headstock. You can see right there. So um, those are the main parts of the acoustic guitar. Um, now, if you were to look at a different guitar, which I have right here, this is the electric guitar. And really the same parts to it. Body, neck, head, fingerboard, frets, tuning machines, same idea. Um, but the sound gets amplified differently, okay? The body does not resonate the same way that an acoustic guitar does. So we have something here called pickups, okay? And these pickups pick up the sound, transmit them through a guitar cable into an actual amplifier, okay? Um, which can get quite loud. Uh, and then of course down here we also have controls here for uh, volume, tone, uh, for more treble, more bass response. And then we have a switch down here that will actually allow you to select between the pickups. Okay, This has two, some have three, some have one. Um, you can blend them together, have one pickup or just the other one. Okay, so that's really the only difference between the electric and the acoustic guitar. Now I'm going to put this down for just a second and grab the acoustic again. And uh, the next thing I want to talk about here are the notes. Okay, and there's there's really not a whole lot of notes to memorize. Okay, the musical alphabet, if you will, it's a lot uh, smaller than the English alphabet. Um, you have seven letters. A through G. Okay, so you have A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. And in between those letters, you have sharps and flats. Okay, uh, for example, if you went from A to B, there's a note in between called an A sharp. Okay, from the perspective of the B, you can also call it a B flat. Okay, these occur between the notes. That's just a small summary of the notes. We're going to have a little bit more on that in detail later in this lesson. But once you get an idea that there are seven main notes, and then there are notes in between, uh, in between the total 12 notes in all. Okay. Um, now moving along, the next thing we need to talk about here are the strings. All right, there's six strings on your typical guitar, and um, we have the low E here. Okay, not low um, as in the proximity to you, which would be this one, but low as in pitch. This is the lowest note that you have on the guitar. Okay, the E. And up top you have the high E. Okay, so low E, high E. In between you have the fifth string, which is A. Fourth string is D. Third string is G. And the second string is B. So, there's a sentence that you can remember, a silly sentence that works out great. Um, Eddie ate dynamite. Goodbye, Eddie. Okay, so Eddie ate dynamite, 
Goodbye Eddie. If you take the first letter of each of those words, um, you'll be able to remember the names of those strings, okay? Real important to know those strings because if you're going to tune your guitar, you need to know what you're tuning your guitar to, okay? If you don't, you might break a string. Um, you know, tune a um, string too high, it'll break. But if you know the strings, you tune them the right way, chances are you won't break a string. All right, so they're real important to know. You also need to know them for a point of reference as you play your notes across the fingerboard. Now, when you do go to tune your guitar, I think the best method when you're just starting out is to use a chromatic tuner, something like this right here. Okay, these work great. The one I use here is an IntelliTouch uh, PT40. Okay, and uh, these are great because if you see here, you can see it right there, nice and clear. Hopefully, it's got a uh, USB port on it, so you can recharge these. Okay, you can also find ones with batteries, those watch batteries, um, but they're kind of expensive. Um, 15 to 20 minutes on charge, you'll get a good few months out of it, and then you just charge it again. So. This is a great one, and all you do is clip it to your guitar, right onto the headstock here, and it kind of hides away. Um, pretty nice, you can see that right there, and it picks up the vibrations of the strings and tunes your guitar. Okay, now you want to actively listen to the strings so you know what they sound like. Okay, and this will help you later on when you tune by ear. Okay, there's also a lot of online resources as well if you want to tune your guitar, okay? Um, this is something you can take with you, you don't need the computer, and it's a good companion to have laying around. Okay, so now I want to talk about holding the guitar pick, all right? There's a couple ways you can do it. Um, the main way, I think the best way, is to, and I'm going to go right over here, so you can see in the close-up, you want to put the pick right on the side of your first finger. Okay, and then from there you just simply clamp your thumb down, okay, over top, flat, okay. Uh, now, don't hold the pick too tight, hold it loosely, as if if someone wanted to come over and just take the pick right out of your fingers, they should be able to do that, okay. Holding it too tight will cause you to tense up, will cause the pick to not flex um, across the strings, which will, uh, will result in a poorer sound, okay, so be really careful with that. Okay, um, the next thing you want to think about is the striking surface of the pick. Okay, now if you look at it, it's a teardrop shape. This is your standard pick. Most are constructed in this manner. And um, the pick suggests to play with the teardrop end. Okay, uh, which a lot of people do. Okay, what I do is, is I turn it over and I play with the rounder part. Okay, this rounder edge right here. It's not right, it's not wrong, it's just the way that I um, like to play, I like the sound, I like the feel and the response I get off of the strings. So it's something you want to experiment with. Maybe, um, you know, when you're strumming you use the rounder edge, when you're playing single notes you use the pointer, uh, um, the teardrop edge. It's totally up to you, okay? Um, so with that in mind now, I want to go over some finger gymnastics or these exercises um, that will develop um, your um, dexterity, your flexibility, agility, and strength, and synchronize your right and left hands together, which is really important. So, first thing I want to do is I want to come up here to the fifth fret. Okay, um, my fifth fret is actually my first dot marker, and your guitar might be the second dot marker. Um, just simply count up here: one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, so we're on the same page here. You can start anywhere, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to play a downstroke on that note, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold that note down with the tip of my finger, keeping my thumb flat on the back of the neck, okay? Try not to bring it too much over the over the fretboard. Keep it back here. Arch your hand slightly so you see some daylight between the palm and your neck. And it's going to push in here, all right? And now I want you to hold that down as you practice your right hand technique. What we're going to do is simply place your pick right on the string, the first string, and then we're going to let your pick drop right over that string, okay? Only go as far as you need to. Okay, I like to anchor my um, fingers or my knuckles somewhere, either the strings or to the top of the guitar. Really helps out with 
um, knowing where you're at on the guitar without looking. Okay, it's a point of reference. Okay, so what I'm doing here, you're not going to see it real clear on the first string. I'm going to move to the second string. I'm just going to use these strings open just for a second. I'm going to go to the second string, my B string, and I'm going to play the second string. Now notice what I'm doing. I'm actually performing a follow through right down into the first string. Okay, that's real important because if you don't maintain that follow through and touch that first string, what you're going to end up doing is number one, playing both strings, or you're going to go down and try to skip over the string. And more likely than not, I've seen this all too many times, you're going to play and end up way out here. Okay, I'm actually even out of the second camera angle shot here when I do this. Um, that's not good either because now you're out of position to play your next note. You have to come back, look at where you're at, look back down here again to play. Way too much time wasted, too much energy, too much effort. So what we want to do is instead of playing what everyone uh, refers to as a downstroke, which is what it is, but I call it an instroke. I know it sounds a little weird, but there's a reason for that. If you play down, you're going to do one or two things, like I said, play the next string or play away from your guitar. Instead, play in, almost like you're playing in toward the sound hole. Okay, very, very little motion going on here. Not much effort at all. I'm just letting my hand relax over the strings, which will allow the pick to fall naturally over the front edge of the string. Okay, now it seems like a lot there, but it's real important to get that down and develop a good habit because you want to stay close to those strings. Okay, that's your downstroke. And you're going to repeat that on all of your strings. Okay, playing inward slightly. Okay, what I like to do is I like to roll my pick down this way, roll my knuckles in toward the guitar, I'll be ensured that I'm going to have um, a good follow through technique and um, I'll be creating a good habit for myself. Okay? Alright, so now on to this finger gymnastic. I'm going to take my first finger, place it in the fifth fret again. We'll get right back to that. And what we're going to do is make sure you're close to the fret. Okay? Uh, what I like to do is I like to touch that slightly with the side of my finger so I know I'm getting a good sound. If I'm on the fret, I get a muted or dampened sound. If I'm too far behind the fret, if I get a sound at all, it's going to be buzzy. So what you want to do is just bring that next to the fret. Okay, That's number one. Then I'm going to put my second finger in the second fret. I'm sorry, in the next fret over in the sixth fret. Okay. My third finger goes in the next fret, which is fret seven. And finally, my pinky goes in the next fret, fret 8. Okay, now if you feel any kind of tension in the back of your hand or your wrist at all, um, that means that you're probably not doing something right behind the scenes back here. So good hand mechanics is really fundamental for, for good technique and for playing these notes um, while maintaining a relaxed posture. So what we want to do, um, if you do feel at all any kind of tension there, is make sure your thumb is flat on the back of the neck, not digging into the neck this way, but just flat and relaxed. Face it away from you slightly, and also make sure there's some space between the neck and your palm so you can pivot and bring your elbow in and out. Okay, that's real important. If you find you can't do that and your body is in the way, move to the front edge of your seat and don't slouch back. That way your, your uh, posture will allow you to actually um, will allow your elbow to move in and out as well. Now that's important because when I do that, you can see how it pushes my pinky right on over there, right? All right, it's real important. It's not all about the uh, size of your fingers or the length of your fingers. It's about good technique because if I move my elbow and pivot off my thumb, I can reach those notes. Now that's real important when we get to the sixth string, okay? Um, as you find yourself playing across these strings you're going to find that there's a little more tension brought into the hand if you keep your hand in the same um, um, motion that you did prior. So as you bring it up to the sixth string, make sure you adapt, arch your hand more, bring your elbow in, you'll be able to reach those notes higher up on the fingerboard. Okay. So let's go back to the first string. Okay, It's the easiest one to play. And we'll go through this a couple times. Also lift your first and second finger as you go 
to your pinky. Okay, nothing wrong with that at all, it's fine. If you're not playing this to a pulse yet, or with a metronome, don't worry about it. You're looking for having a really good tone and consistent volume from your strings, number one. And then once you feel comfortable and more confident with this exercise, you can play it with a pulse and make sure that you're in time. Okay? And then, of course, you want to go backwards as well. Start with the pinky, move back. Now, as you play this and you get more comfortable and uh, gain strength, you might want to move that back toward the nut. Okay, There's a reason why we don't start back there right away. The nut, there's more tension, and back by the nut too, your frets are further apart. Okay, So start anywhere up in this region of the fingerboard and then work your way down. Okay, Alright, now I want to end with a little bit more um, theory about the fingerboard. Okay, I started getting to this a little bit earlier in the lesson. And I want to go back to it and revisit the notes a little bit, okay? Um, now, how do you find these notes on the on the fingerboard? What you do is you start with the E string, okay? Start with Eddie, okay? And then what we do is we go up to the very next note. Now, E goes right to F. And that's your first note here on the sixth string, okay? And I suppose we'll stay on the first string for now since it's a, uh, it's a little bit easier to play. E goes to F. It's called a natural half step. Now, as we go to each note, the very next note that's available to you, that's the next fret. Okay? Um, and like I said prior, you need to have a sharp or a flat to go between those notes that we spoke about. But E to F is a natural half step. Okay? It, it occurs naturally. You do not need a sharp there. Then we go to F sharp. Then we go to G. Then we go to G sharp. Okay, for, for this explanation, I'll use uh, the sharps, okay, keep it a little bit more easy to understand. Um, now that's my four finger zone right there. From there I can't play anymore, right? So what I do is I go one fret past my pinky with my first finger and it starts my next zone. So now I have an A note after the G sharp. Then I have an A sharp, B, then I have a uh, natural half step again going B to C. Okay, again, no B sharp goes directly from B to C. Okay, and then I go to C sharp, ninth fret, D, D sharp, and then E. Okay, now I can keep going, of course, but if I get to 12th fret, that's real important because I can test myself to see if I um, did this exercise correctly. This is an E string. This is also an, or an E note. This is also an E note, it's the 12th fret, okay, it's the octave. So I know that if I went through this string the proper way, and I land on an E, okay, I know I did it right. Each string works the same way. The 12th fret is also the same note as the open string, okay, it's really important to know. And then from there, of course, you can continue up the fingerboard. So there's two natural half steps involved here, B, C, and E, F. Okay, and usually what I tell my students is, is you have E, first string, B, second string. Okay, your first and your second string on the guitar is exactly where your half steps lie, your natural half steps lie. For example, your first fret from E is F, and your first fret from B is C. Okay, so it makes it a little easier to understand and to help memorize where the natural half steps occur E, F, B, C. Other than that, there's sharps in between all those notes. Okay, I hope that helped you out. For day one, what I want you to do is go back, review this lesson, check it out, and then go into day two.